Welcome to the PHNX Sun Devil Show. I'm Anthony Totri. We got Shane Diefenbach, also known as Big Pokey over here. We got Eric Ruby, also known as Jose Perez, back Jesus. on the show. And then we've got DJ Jacob Franklin behind the Mac. DJ Jacob Franklin is a kid. Making all the magic happen. Guys, do us a solid. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and leave a five-star review if you're listening on audio for the first time. We have got a lot to get into. We're going to be talking about the NCAA president, Charlie uh, Baker, probably taking away or trying to take away one of Shane's favorite things. And no, that's, I don't bet on college. No, but still, player props in general. I don't bet on college player props. That's not my one of my favorite things. Okay, it's well, one it's my one least of, favorite things, actually. Really? Yeah. On, so you're siding with Char- We'll get into that yeah. a little bit later in the show. Frankie Collins entering the transfer portal. And, and right off the top, we've got the Athletics' Tobias Bass joining the show to talk all things Arizona State basketball in the transfer portal, of course. Tobias, we, we really do appreciate you hopping on um, today's show. Mr. Mr. Jacob Franken. Are we? What are we doing over here, man? Come on, <laughs> the build up. Gosh, it's so I know intense. it's like he's just a boy. Is he there? Tobias, he's just there. Is he there? Oh, hello. There he is. Thanks for hopping on today, man. No problem. Thanks for having me on. Of course. First and foremost, we, we started a little bit talking about Frankie Collins entering the transfer portal yesterday. Clearly, the best player for the Sun Devils last season broke the program single season steal record. Just what's the latest with Frankie, and, and really what was behind that decision? Um, I think he just probably wanted to test his options. You saw a couple of guys, unfortunately, they're going to stay end up getting about it there. Um, I think now most of these kids, just like they're on one-year contracts everywhere, you know, they they go somewhere. Oh, I'm really good. I'm probably going to leave. You have dudes, they're shooting all the balls at high major. They're getting in anyway just, just because. Yeah, it really does feel like this, the, I mean, this era of NCAA basketball and NCAA football too. It's just – it, it it's almost mercenary work and there's and, and, and it's hard for fans to continue to buy in what do you think of the way that you know the nca is going like I, I think everybody can agree it's good to give power to the players but like do you see the nca stepping in at all to change any of this as far as them leaving no, I, don't, I don't i think that it's been too open for this is what year three i think of the portal it's kind of just open seas. I mean, they helped by shortening it from 60 to 45 days. That helped, you know, the, the coach be able to get like a little bit of a break. But, I mean, if coaches can leave whenever they want, I think the players should be able to, too. That's fair enough. I, I'm wondering from a national perspective, because obviously we focus on ASU and sometimes it kind of feels like, man, again, man, another one. It almost seems yeah. like specific to to our school. Like, is it abnormal, the amount of players that are declaring for the transfer portal out of ASU, or do you just feel like it's more of a, a national thing, less of a local thing? I think I think it's just – I think it's a national thing. I mean, there's – I mean, I was joking with the buddy about this. Now, there are kids playing tomorrow and Friday. They're going to leave. They're playing – they're, they're going to be playing this weekend. They're going to leave. And they, they get in the game, too. This isn't like the ninth, tenth man. He doesn't play. These kids, they're going to check in on Thursday and probably have a successful night, and they're going to leave. So I think that it's just, I think it's just a national thing. Right, unfortunately, ASU's lost a few, but I mean, we've seen recent years where, like, like some teams they're just getting depleted. They're losing the whole roster. You know, like my school last year, they lost what four or five guys. They had to replace like six or seven guys last year. It's it's such a weird, weird era. I feel like to live in. And to your point, Shane, like I think it's great that the players have this opportunity. Uh, but from a coaching perspective, it, it is something that I would not want to be a college basketball coach as it stands right now because yeah. it just feels like such a difficult job. And for Bobby Hurley now, the second, third year where he really does have to rebuild a starting rotation, what have you heard on the transfer portal front on terms of ASU trying to get guys from that portal? Yeah, I'm hearing they're really trying to go out there. Sincere Parker at St. Louis, he really, really can score, I think. Three of his last nine games, he had three 30-point games back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. He really, really can score. 
Trayvon Spillers at Appalachian State, he got in the other day. Deuce Turner at San Diego State, he recently got in. Guy, guys like that are him and are going after. What What is your view on Bobby Hurley as a coach and as a recruiter? What What, what do people outside of the program think of him? I think I think that he's a solid coach. I mean, he he gets talent there. I mean, I don't think there's no doubt about it. he gets them there. Now, do they leave? Yeah, but he's getting them in the door. I think it just may be a situation far as it might just be might be playing time. It might be you know early minutes as a freshman or a sophomore. I think some of those kids might be good enough to earn ten, eleven minutes. I think you probably got to try to play those guys early so they don't leave. Especially he's in an area where you have really good prep schools in the area. At least are not that far. Dream City Christian, Arizona Conference Prep. There are schools in that area that he really can kind of go grab a couple of those kids. So the selling point is, is if you come here, you're going to play. So if he can sell that to them and make ends on his promises, I think he'll, have, I think he'll be successful and be able to keep those guys going forward. Do you see like a, a consistency with in between coaches that can keep talent these days? Like, is there something that like uh, coaches have that you seek over the course of seasons where you're like, okay, th- these type of coaches retain guys more often. So I'll give an example with Houston, for example. They do a really good job because they do both. Jamal Shedd, Marcus Sasser, those guys are homegrown guys. They didn't get in the portal and get those guys. Where you look at like uh, Quentin, who plays with the, I think he plays with the Pistons now. He was a Houston kid, he ended up going to Kansas, you know, People have pretty much given up on him, even though he was a five-star recruit. They bring him in for two years. He's a pro. So I think you have to have a good combination of both. What Houston does is they homegrown their guys, and they may have a patch job. Oh, we need a four. I'll go get a four in the portal. We need a, a center. I'll go do that. But most of their players, they've been in the program three, four years, and I think that they respect that I'm not going to get recruited over for the most part if I'm here, and they're going to develop me. Do you think that like, like right now, like you said, we're just a couple of years into it. Obviously it's kind of crazy. It feels like we're adjusting. Do you think maybe we're too far, like in one direction? And then as time goes on with the transfer portal, maybe kids will realize chasing like different schools or maybe schools will get their money up. And so the discrepancy won't be as bad. Do you feel like maybe right now, the amount of movement is more than it will be in, in a couple of years? I, I think, I think eventually It'll level itself out. I just don't know when. I mean, it's kind of, it's like the new pretty girl at school. You know, when she comes down the hallway, everybody's going to run after her. She's, you know, she's the prettiest girl I've ever seen. So that's how it is right now. And then, and then these kids, you know, they're 19, 20. Who doesn't want to get told how great they are and how much money they can make? They all want that. So I think eventually it'll level itself out. But for the time being, I think it's just going to be open season pretty much every year. In, in terms of success year over year, you brought up a program like Houston that does do a little bit of homegrown talent while also being able to get guys from the portal. Whereas for Arizona State specifically and some of the other programs, I think in the Pac-12 or what used to be the Pac-12, it really was we have to reshape our roster every single season. Do you think in terms of like long-term success, especially moving to a conference like the Big 12 where there are giants like like baylor yeah. like houston like kansas yeah. like will there ever be a program that does have to rebuild its roster year over year that actually does find serious success long term in the ncaa tournament i think it can be done but it's really gonna it's gonna be hard when you're bringing i mean typically when you see teams bringing in six seven eight guys it's kind of a a bail for a few things coaching change is probably happening he's probably on the hot seat one Two, they're like really, really desperate to be successful. They just got rid of all the kids they previously had. They figured if we just bring in seven new players, it's better than what we had before. So I think I think you have to do it where you have a combination of both. I don't – it's hard bringing in that many players. They're coming from different spots. They got different motivations. It's hard to bring it all, it all together and just go play. Who are your number one – your, your your top targets in the portal, not even just for Arizona State, but who who are some of the names that you're like, damn, that's that's a guy somebody needs to go get. Um, it's really probably just gonna be the bigs. I mean, last year we didn't really see that many good big men collect. There was a few like Hunter Dickens, there was a few, but outside of the upper echelon, there really wasn't that many. This year we've seen they're pretty, there's some there's some good bigs in there. The one from Charleston, Amari Williams. Uh, uh, DJ Burns from uh, Youngstown. There's some good bigs in there. So if I was a school, I was a school. I'm trying to get as many bigs as I can because 
it just might not be that many as we go through this process. We asked you about just your perspective of Bobby Hurley as a coach. And obviously looking at ASU basketball from a wide angle, there's a lot that needs to improve in order for this program to get to where Bobby Hurley wants it to be. What, in your opinion, is the biggest thing that ASU basketball needs to change, fix, improve on in order to take that next step and, and regain some traction as a program? I mean, kind of what this show's been about so far, got to keep guys. I mean, last year, Warren leaves, Cambridge leaves, Frankie leaves. I mean, damn, like they made the tournament last year. All these guys left, you know, like like all of them left. Like you didn't keep any of them, any none of them. So I think it's just more just about retaining those players, you know, and 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 he might have to go about it in a different way. I think, for example, with them, I think a smart approach would be, like, you look at Michael Nwoko. He's a big at Miami. He averaged like three points. Four-star recruit coming out. I think he was top 70. I would go recruit that kid because one is going to have three to four years of development. He can hopefully stay here, and you can let him grow. Whereas you go get a grad transfer, he's only going to be here six months, and he leaves. Now we got to replace this kid again. Now let's go get a sophomore or a junior that's solid probably didn't play as many minutes as he would have liked to, but has the talent. Let's get that kid better and bring him in here and keep him for a couple of years. And and we've seen them start to do that a little bit. You know, they, they go get Sean Phillips Jr. Who, you know, was this big man who hasn't really yeah. developed. They go get Adam Miller who, who still has two more years of eligibility left. They go get Frankie Collins when he was a freshman and still they they kind of get to this point. So I, I think more so Eric, the, the question, I don't mean to answer it, but it's just like, I think it's just money at this point. Yeah. Like I think this team just That's needs true. more funds. Yeah, no, it's tough. Yeah. Tobias last question that we've got for you, just kind of circling back to, to Frankie Collins, kind of how we started this whole thing. We saw it with Jemiah Neal last year. He entered the transfer portal, opted to return. If you had to give a percentage on it, what are the odds that Frankie Collins opts to return to Arizona state after exploring his options? That's tough. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Percentage. I don't. I can't. I don't think he's gonna come back. I. I, I don't. Because what he's gonna be able to demand and and gonna be able to get. I don't. I don't know. And it might not be worth it. They. They. They might not be worth to pay him X amount of dollars. Somebody will. Somebody will give him that that big check, and he and he should do that. He should. Absolutely. The Athletics, Tobias Bass. We appreciate you taking the time today, man. No problem. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks, Bass. Look, I, I mean, I feel like he hit the nail on the head just in terms of some of the stuff with the the program in, in general, just where Bobby Hurley and Arizona State sit in the last season of the Pac-12, now heading to the Big 12, like there is some serious work to be done in the transfer portal. Yeah, let's talk about money. Uh, <laughs> Ryan brings up, Shane, you, got, you, you said guys like playing for Bobby. If that's true, why do so many guys transfer out? Well, a lot of it's money, but and I know that the – the immediate rebuttal is, well, if if they, you know, if, if this person really loved playing for this person, they wouldn't leave for money. Saul Buckman, I love you, brother. <laughs> but if somebody's offering me five hundred thousand dollars to go to go like Do produce a job. show at at San Diego State, I'm taking that money. Yeah. I'm out of here. I yeah. love this job. Yeah. It's awesome. Five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Frankie Collins is ASU's highest paid athlete. This entire year, he is ASU's highest paid athlete across any sport. Football is the money maker. Frankie Collins is is making more money than anybody on the football team, and he still decides to put his name in the portal because he knows he can go get more money. What does that say about Arizona State in this basketball program? It says they just don't have enough. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they're paying him a shit ton. Yeah. It's somewhere in the in the in the two hundred k range. I genuinely don't know if a guy like him who is awesome but he's not a number one option is going to be worth your budget and i'm not gonna i'm not trying to put a monetary value on him because that's not what i want to do what i'm trying to say is that if you're going to pay a premium and pay your highest paid athlete a certain amount of money and he's going to be the highest paid athlete at your school that motherfucker better bring you to an ncaa tournament yeah, like you, yeah, and, and I know he wasn't set up for success, and this is not supposed to be a shot at Frankie Collins whatsoever. Mm. It's a shot at the organization. It's a shot at the school. It's a shot at the, the 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 fundraising because it's it's clearly not enough. Well, and it's it's also tough because when you don't have a large pool of money to draw from, 
right? And you want to keep guys who are really good like Frankie Collins. And, and did he have the best success as a team or as an individual player this season? No, but he still went out there and performed like one of, if not the best athlete at, at ASU on one of these major money-making uh, sports. And at the same time, though, when you only have a certain pool to pull from and you have a guy making up top like that much, the rest of what you're able to give to the team around him and what you're able to offer to other players, like it's, it's less. Right. Yeah. And so it's not on Frankie Collins for taking that money. And it's not on Frankie no. Collins for, for leaving. If he's going to be able to get more, which he will definitely Frankie be Collins able to get more deserved to be ASU's highest paid 100%. Athlete because it's, he was the, 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 the I don't know. Best. I, I would, I would argue that I don't think he deserves to be the highest paid athlete period at Arizona state. I think he deserved to be the highest paid basketball player at Arizona state in terms of, Moving forward, I think kind of going both ways. I think Frankie Collins is doing what's right for him, and I think the program is doing what's right for the program. Could Arizona State pay Frankie Collins double what he's making? Probably. But like Tobias said, you're getting a one-year rental at that point, and this program is not looking for one-year rentals anymore. That's not how this program is going to succeed in the Big 12 or at least try and get to that point. It starts with guys like an Adam Miller yeah. that you do go get when they are a little bit younger, and it does have them – you know, set up for success two, three years but down the line. They got Frankie when he was a little bit younger. They yeah. did. It's just the program wasn't set up at the point where they were going to make NCAA tournament runs. And like he said, they made the tournament yeah. last year yeah. and yeah. they lose how many players? Yeah, they and they they won a tournament game. Right. I don't care if it was they won a tournament game last year. Yeah. They didn't just they didn't just make it. Uh JJ saying this is also a very bad season. Yes. Like he, uh, people are undervaluing these kids wanting to go to winning programs for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. They, 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 they want to win. Remy Martin wanted to win. Frankie yeah. Collins wants to win. For he sure. Wants he wants to go to a tournament. He's the type of dude who can like plug into really any team and especially ones that are already yeah. good, that are already tournament contenders and raise their floor tremendously. Yeah. Especially yeah. teams like a Houston or a San Diego state that have that, Defensive prowess. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And I'm not. I'm not trying to make the players look bad in the situation. I, the, my argument is is, is against the school. Uh, like, it, yeah. it, the, At no point is it about. How, it's the landscape of everything. I mean, yeah. it just it just kind of sucks. It sucks for for fans and it sucks for continuity and. But what who it doesn't suck for is the players because as right. Tobias said. If, if the people in charge of them can leave at any point, they should be able to yeah. as well. No, you're absolutely right. Look, I do want to get to James' question here in a second. But first, I'm going to tell you about our friends over at BetMGM and how you can make a little bit of money. There is a full slate of NBA games tonight, Ooh. boys. Who do we like tonight? Give oh, me one winner each. Well, here, I'll give you a, a parlay winner. Oh, okay. That, this is the tastiest thing ever. I built it on bets. Tasty little nugget? Yeah. It's, well, no, that wasn't the tasty nugget. This uh. was the parlay machine. It's book over eight points or eight plus points in the first quarter. Okay. Because he's averaging 8.8 over his last 10. He's averaging 8.2 the whole season. Durant, 25 plus points. He's had 25 plus in every game against the Nuggets except for two in the task 10. Okay. Uh, Jokic, 10 plus rebounds. He does that every night. Um, and he's done that like eight or nine of the last 11 or something against the Suns and Nurkic two plus blocks. And that's, what's going to have to take us home because he's questionable. Isn't he? Is he? Yeah. Well, then he, gets he got hurt last game. He gets yeah. voided anyway. Yeah. It gets um, voided that. But yeah. if he does play, he's had f every single game in the past five games against the Nuggets. He's had two blocks. What are the odds on that? Seven fifty. I like it. I see. I don't have anything that good. Cause I, like I, I don't host Give an incredible bet show. Give me a winner. A winner. A winner. I think the Clippers are going to lose to a shorthanded 76ers team tonight. Wow. Okay. I just, I feel like, well, all the focus is kind of on the Phoenix Suns. I mean, obviously, because, you know, we're PHNX and Wait, cover the Suns. Uh, shocking, breaking news. Uh, the Clippers have low-key been, like, really stinky. Yeah. Re like, they figured it out real good, and then they have slipped pretty tremendously. The Pelicans have overtaken them for the fourth seed. And they're not the type of team that I look at and say, you know what, adversity? That's going to make you, you better. <laughs> and, and the 76ers are a team that, uh, when they played the Suns shorthanded, they were just, uh, they are feisty. The Annoying. Suns still came out on top. Um, but they're, they're, they're a feisty bunch. Plus they're fighting for their, uh, their playoff life over in the East as well. So give me a, give me the 76 ers That's plus two twenty on a money line against the Clippers. I'm here for it guys. If you want to place either one of those bets, make sure you're doing it on the bet MGM sports app to take advantage 
of this offer, especially if it's your first time. Download that BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit at least $10 into your BetMGM Sportsbook account. And place your wager, your first wager, and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. And if that bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. Sign up for BetMGM and use that bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10, and you guys are going to receive that $1,500 in bonus bets we talked about if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details and Ellison to Shane. Talk about the disclaimer. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. And if you uh, want to maybe go in person but still bet with our friends over at BetMGM, you can do that at the BetMGM Sportsbook over at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. And it's true that no one does it better, and that's why they are a place that we go for a lot of our watch parties, including two coming up for the Final Four, April 5th and April 7th. It's a collab with Mike Bibby and his collection. He's got shoes. He's got really cool stuff going on, and we're going to be watching the Suns games on the 5th and the seventh. It's going to be such a good time, guys, and uh, make sure you head out over there, but if you maybe can't make it on those days and you still want to have an authentic and immersive experience with an unprecedented level of entertainment, you can still go to Gila River Resorts and Casinos on any day of the week. You can go to their state-of-the-art gaming floor, 800 slot machines, 15 blackjack tables, live table games, and not to mention the BetMGM, Arizona's largest casino sports book, or you just want to go for a staycation, you want to chill out, for it. go by the pool, you know, get a little casual meal, or you want to dress up and have an uh, upscale dining experience guys they have it all plus some shows as well that you could check out over at gila river resorts and casinos let them show you what next level is about you do you at gila river resorts and casinos visit play at gila.com for more details and I, I did want to get to james question that he had earlier but first let's go ahead and let's pull up the announcement um mm. that frankie collins kind of set off on twitter the other day kind of interesting left the door open to potentially return so i will go ahead and read um, just just part of this statement that I think is probably the the most intriguing for Arizona State fans, and it comes right at the end there. With one year of eligibility remaining, I will be exploring my options in the NCAA transfer portal with ASU being an option to return. Now, we talked about the idea of Frankie potentially coming back. We saw it with Jemiah Neal. Initial thoughts on if Frankie Collins does opt to return to Look, Tempe. Look, I think from the things that I've heard that he might think about returning, and that's not just BS, the end of his thing. That being said, I do believe that he's going to go to a visit with a couple schools that I've heard that he's going to, and it's like, okay, those are impressive schools. Yeah, <laughs> See the facilities, see the, see the program, talk to the coaches, and that's going to be like, okay, that, I could definitely see this, and then the dollar signs are going to come on his eyes. And, yeah. And... Everything would improve yeah. for him. So I, I'm i going to say no. I'm going to say no. He's not coming back. And, he, and bold prediction, must bus. Oof. He's getting on the must bus. He's Jeez. getting on the must bus? He's getting on the must bus. That would how, suck. I, how ironic that would, would that suck. be? That would, yeah, that would suck. But go ahead. I, uh, I love Arkansas. I fully They're my second believe... favorite college basketball team. Fair enough. About third behind Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> the moneymaker? Yeah, the Mastodons. I fully believe that, like, in his in his head, he's still going to be like, oh, I'm considering ASU. Like, I'd be open to coming back. But like Shane said, like, you're going to go not only see the money, yeah. because like, the money's a big part of it, but Frankie Collins wants to win, yeah. right? You're somebody at his point in his career, and, and there was somebody who comped him to, uh, to Remy in the chat. I forget who it was. But like a fringe NBA guy, somebody that could maybe, you know, be playing pro for a very long time, wants to go to a school that has a chance to be really successful, make a deep run in college while well, you can. And of course... When you go to a school like that, money comes with it, but yeah. also facilities, you know, also like coaching staff and like investment from the school and stuff like that. And then not a shot at Bobby Hurley, but just like a overall basketball program. Like you spend all this time here, right? You go from Sac State to Arizona State. You see how this basketball program is ran. And then you go to some very impressive schools and see how that's ran for a guy who his his NBA chances are, are slim. I won't say they're non-existent, but they're they're, they're slim. slim. Um, you you want to feel like that importance now. Yeah. And I think once you're walking there and your boots on the ground, like it's not going to be a screw ASU. I would never go back there. It's just a, 
well, if I lay it all down on the table, what's the best option for me? And I, I think it's going to be a long shot for ASU to come out the winner of that like debate in a sense. Yeah, state. and the best option for him is realistically to to go look at his options in the portal. Yeah, I know Jemiah did it last year and opted to to come back. I, I think Frankie is going to have far more suitors than Jemiah did last season. And I think when a player enters a transfer portal and then says like, "Hey, there, there's always an option to return." It feels like you're taking a break, right? He's taking a break from his girlfriend. And <laughs> like, how often does that work out where you take a break and then you come back and you're like, oh, we're good now. This is great. Like even when Jemiah did it last year, he entered the portal, came back. The relationship wasn't great. The season wasn't great. His yeah. play wasn't great. Like just because Frankie Collins enters the transfer portal and takes a quote unquote break from ASU, like if he opted to return again, how much of an impact would it have versus Bobby saying, hey, we've got a handful of guys that we will keep on this roster, which, you know, gets thinner by the day. And we're just going to try and build it around a younger group, whether that be an Adam Miller or a Sean Phillips Jr. And some of these freshmen that I know a lot of people in the chat are really hyped to see. Yeah. And I think it's something Tobias touched on. Like there may be a time for Arizona State and Bobby Hurley in the first year of the Big 12. Just take it on the chin, take it on the chin, play your class play your freshmen, play your young guys, let them get that experience, show them that they're a, a major part of this program. And I know Shane probably doesn't like that answer, but I, I think... Why do you say that? And just your facial reaction. It didn't look like you... <laughs> well, no, you, I, I, when you said take it on the chin, I thought you meant just like say, fuck it and not do anything. No, 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 no. Like no, you, no I, I, completely, I completely agree with getting the freshmen more minutes if it means... Retaining them? Re well, yeah, retaining them. But if it means, you know building but you do you, you need to go get some some guys because there's uh, the, the roster spots um there's a lot starters. of starters i was talking well, actually, there's not a lot of them surprisingly oh yeah there's there's not a ton of scholarships open there's like three or four there's a lot of starting no, spots two or still three. Open. yeah 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 only one starter right now expected to return uh but Crazy. you could be colorado yeah who colorado only has kj lot. simpson kj uh, simpson's a bucket that with cody williams no, Cody Williams is gone. He's going to the draft. Are you serious? Oh, is he? Dude, he was projected to be the number one pick this year. Oh, that's crazy. At the yeah. start of the year. No. He, his value definitely diminished, but he's going to be a top 10 pick. Damn. Yeah. Cody Williams is totally gone. Um, Eddie Lampkin entered the portal, which, Saw that. dude, come on, man. Come on. You're such a big 12 Colorado guy. I think it just fits. <laughs> he probably ends up still in it the big 12. It just fits. Oh, for sure. You know where he's going? He's going to Texas Tech or uh, why Baylor. Did they, why did the bigs go to Tech? I don't know, but he would look good in red. Oh, my look gosh. Good in red. And we he's look good in great and purple. Look great in black and gold. He's gonna look really good in red. Nah, the gonna red's look... gonna the red's gonna show his curves well. <laughs> yes. He's gonna, he's gonna, look, gonna highlight his figure. He's gonna look great. No, yeah, but KJ Simpson's like they're they're well, he's their only starter that's coming back. Uh, but their only like significant player that's coming back so far. So it's not just and this isn't a oh, ha 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 Colorado. This is a it might be for you, but this is a like, ha, 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 yeah, Colorado. this is a like, <laughs> look, it, it does happen to other people. That being said, it, it doesn't does. happen to other people as frequently. Um, and as I said at the start of the show, yes, your best player is probably leaving. Or as I said this last week, yes, your best player is probably leaving. But you it's still not as bad as it has been like so far. It could yeah, always get worse. I mean, it's 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 a, it's a low bar, though. But I'm, I'm confident in saying this like Adam Miller's coming back mm -hmm. and, and Sean Phillips. It's probably coming back. Well, you lost me there, buddy. Well, yeah, he he's a. I'm not I, the I just, same I'm way not a fan. you and Marcus Go play and Douglas the Dominican. Get in issues. It's okay. Go play. <laughs> no, jeez, jeez. Okay. Uh, no, listen. I, I. It's the thing that frustrates me, I guess, about like Sean Phillips is that I can see how We're good not he could about be. Sean no, I am. I am. It's how good he could be. And if he comes back, then like I will buy it. Like I'll reinvest myself. But just from what I've seen, I'm like, yeah. Adam Miller, though, that is exciting, and, and that is somebody that you could also see that. Maybe in a year where ASU will have less like older talent, maybe a lot of young guys, somebody who can step up, take that offensive load, like maybe plays a little bit more confidently when he has a full season of maybe being that guy, right? Yeah, in a full yeah. off season of having that expectation on him as well. And, and taking it on the chin for the first year, I don't think is really going to be a choice for ASU. It's more just going to be a fact. And then you need to kind of buy into that and say, how do we come out of this on the other side as good as we can, right? How do we not only develop these young guys, give them enough playing time and invest in them so that we don't lose any of this, like, quote, like historic for ASU, like recruiting class. Like, so we don't lose any of these guys a year from now after getting our butts kicked, right? Like, yeah. you, you need to be able to to invest in them and want them to stick around. And then also, like, 
you don't want to see your best player leave at the end of the year because as much as you could try to spin zone this and there there are certainly positives that can be taken away and say you know what maybe this could be a positive from Frankie leaving and like yes maybe it's not as bad as it was before like we yeah. sat here two weeks ago and went what's worst case scenario you lose you Frank. lose Adam Miller you lose Frankie Collins and like one of those things is very very likely to happen like granted the other one isn't but like that that was yeah. still something we sat here and said you can't lose that and and they most and they likely did. are they did yeah um jj saying it's happening everywhere and that's something that i that i was kind of getting to with the colorado thing it's mostly happening everywhere but what's happening is you know you might lose your top player uh, and and you know like your Caleb Loves might transfer your your top end talent and th those are million school. dollar players yeah, yeah. They, like they they might leave but what's happening at other places is those guys leave and the next man up is like either he's coming in and he's 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 transferring in as that as as a guy who is almost as good as that guy or he's already on the roster and he's staying what's happening at ASU is you're losing your top end guys whether it be to the portal or graduation and then the guys who are like. Okay, like Braylon Green, who's mm -hmm. now supposed to probably get more minutes next year, is also leaving. Yeah. You know, Austin Nunez is leaving. Duke Brennan is leaving. Like you lose your your starting guard and your backup guard leaves too, which which can't happen. And and that's something that this team needs it's to do. It's one or the other. That's that's the biggest thing that this team needs to fix because you're gonna lose your mercenaries. Like somebody I saw somebody bring it up in the chat. Might as well go to contracts at this point. Haha. -ha, like, yeah, like it, it, it does yeah. feel like that, but power to the players. You have to adapt, and and you if, if that guy's gonna leave because he's gonna go get a shit ton of money, and you can't pay him that, then you sure as hell better start talking to his backup. Who, this is how college basketball works. The players get better over time, yeah, and it's yeah. not like the NBA where like, oh yeah, he's gonna go from a five points per game to a six points. No, he's gonna go from a five points per game to a fifteen. Yeah. We saw what Jemaya Neal's leap was. We we've we've seen this in the past. Like players get drastically better, and you have to keep your 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 backups. And, and and your rotational pieces because those yeah. rotational pieces turn into your biggest pieces. Yeah, it, it's one or the other. And I think the most frustrating part about this for me is this, this isn't the first time that we've seen Bobby lose both, right? Like how early on last season, Shane, did we know that DJ Horn was going to hit the portal, Yeah, right? So it's the same thing that if we know it, Bobby, his teammates yep. know it. And that's when you need to start having those conversations with those guys that aren't getting as many minutes in the rotation and being like, hey, like next year, like I know we still got a lot to accomplish this year, but we really see big things for you next year. And the tough thing, I guess, for for Bobby kind of transitioning from last offseason to this is last year there were more guys that just were graduating, right? Yep. Luther Muhammad mm -hmm. was playing in the rotation. He's gone. Des Cambridge, gone. And it, it sucks that Devin and Warren obviously hit the portal, but you lose a guy like DJ Horn, and then you lose Austin Nunez, and you lose Duke Brennan. Yeah. So I think it is, you know, regardless of what people want to say about this offseason, you look at some of the players and the starters – Frankie Collins hitting the portal. Yes. Jemaya Neal hitting the portal. Yes. Like that is what it is. You need and hope that you're going to retain ace. And then you lose a guy like Alonzo Gaffney, which adios. I'm saying I'm that's fine. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's, out, out of eligibility. <laughs> and then Jose Perez is 25 about, years old and can, he's gone. Can we talk about Gaffney for a second? Oh my gosh. No, just, like, like, just like real, really fast. Okay. Like, yeah. What we'll do you have want to talk memoriam about? When, when all these players are officially gone. <laughs> in memoriam. But, but <laughs> But Alonzo Gaffney, and I know how much how frustrating it is because, like, any ASU fan can 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 tell you how like much you just wanted to grab his head and be like, Alonzo, yeah, stop it. But the amount of like one entertainment he provided was amazing. But two entertainment for whom? <laughs> for us, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was awesome. We'd be up twenty in a game, and Gaffney would start jacking threes. Or when Gaffney was the best player in the country for for a couple games, like that shit was was great. But in all seriousness, the guy stayed. He transferred in, and he stayed. He yeah. stayed. Like, Did he have options? Yes, he had options. 100% he had options. Isn't it crazy that he played at Ohio State? Yes. That it's, it's insane. And I think it was you that showed me his uh, his mixtape, his highlight mixtape. Have, have you guys ever watched that? Alonzo Gaffney was the best player in the state of Ohio. It is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Go watch Alonzo Gaffney's high school mixtape. It is crazy. JJ, I know you, you basketball sicko. Go watch that. It is amazing. Um, yeah, but it is impressive that he that it makes he, me that, sick to my stomach that to he, talk about that, him. He, that he stayed. Um, JJ asking me a question. And this is the last thing before we move on. He says, Shane, how do you feel about Bobby now? I know you said we'd you, you judge in the offseason. I think, unfortunately, kind of backtracking what i all said i think a lot of this is about money unfortunately like i think yeah i think the reason why you even enter the portal in the first place is to go see what you're worth um so it's hard to say uh 
I, and then I know I did say like, yeah, if you lose one of those two guys, like it's like, okay. I no, think we I'm literally not, tweeted that clip out. No, I might be out. <laughs> um, but this does make me feel better. Okay. Bit. Interesting. That being said, if, if help, if, 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 <laughs> if, if it's compounded with the, the transfers of your entire bench and you know, you, 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 you lose a couple other pieces then it's like, oh, all right, now I don't know because I, I, I don't, I don't want to keep rebuilding, but you can't fire him. You just, no, that's not, not right now. No, no, you can't. One, happening. that's not happening. And two, you need these freshmen to come in. Yeah, you, you need like, the freshmen. You need them. Uh, and you don't have somebody to look for, yeah. like, like, even the freshmen aside, like on a completely other level, you don't have somebody to lead the yeah. charge to hire a new basketball coach. What I'm so excited for, and it's kind of like the honeymoon phase when you start dating somebody, is... All of our analogies are just dating. <laughs> what was... What the first it? one was taking a break. Taking a break. Oh. Like, oh, I'm going to enter the portal, mm. but I might come oh, back. Tobias Bass mentioned the hot girl at school. Yeah. That Anyway, it, it, it like it's kind of the honeymoon phase in the transfer portal when you see a guy like I remember when when Des Cambridge and the Cambridge brothers committed. Like that was the most like excited I'd ever been about ASU basketball because you look at Des Cambridge highlights, he's dropping nineteen a game. Yeah, he, he can create his own shot. And you, you look the at the You look at yeah, you look at the basketeer Devin Cambridge who's just <laughs> jumping over people. It's, his entire mixtape at Auburn was just him dunking on dudes. Yeah, like that is so exciting. And then they come here and you're like, yeah, he's not that good. But. <laughs> Oh, they, they both, I love having him here, though. They both know they both were good. Yeah. But, but I mean, like, like you look at Sean Phillips. I remember watching his mixtape. You're like, holy shit, this kid's gonna yeah, be awesome. Yeah, it wasn't as he as expected. Bullied. But that's the best part about this offseason is now we get to go into that. So if there's one silver lining about the transfer portal, is you're gonna get that notification. Tobias Bass is gonna tag us in something, and it's gonna be like, <laughs> ooh, St. Louis Billiken, whatever his name is, who averaged 26 points a game. At a mid-major, not a low mid-major conference is transferring to ASU. And then the next three weeks, we're just like, give me the Billikens. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to talk myself back into this team. Yeah, it's like, going gonna, gonna to happen for sure. Enough times gonna go it's going to go by. I'm going to sit back and be like, ooh, look at these high school mixtapes. Oh, my ooh, gosh. Look, at these. <laughs> like, look, if there is one player that didn't get a whole lot of run last season that I am interested to see what they can do next year for Arizona State, and I don't expect them to, to hit the portal, would be a guy like Malachi Davis. Who Ooh. Malachi? Who, who you don't was, expect him to hit the portal? I don't expect him to hit the portal. Really? No, I think if he would have hit the portal, I think he would have done it already. In my mind, again, he sees an opportunity coming from where he was coming from, like a Tampa. Yeah, he was coming from a community college. Yeah, community college in like Florida or yeah, something. Or I think he sees he was the high, he was one of the highest scorers. Yeah. I think there's an opportunity for him to play some serious for minutes sure. And, I, and, I, and that's another guy who I was like romanticizing when he first transferred. Yeah, because his last five games of the season, he had like 30 yeah, points a and, game, and he's he's just an absolute bucket. But I also I don't know if I, I yeah you're right he hasn't entered the portal which is kind of crazy yet but I also don't know like what would really benefit him putting his name in the portal right now because he has no tape at the Division One level, um, but I also thought his body language was very poor yeah and I and I and I knew I know his role and and again I, I don't know what the conversations are like and it might just be how he acts in general like I mean, he might not actually be sulking yeah. it's just like but. I, from what I saw, I was like, oh, shit, this kid is not happy and he's going to leave. Well, and think about it. Think about it from the Frankie Collins is making X amount of money, right? Now you have that money on top of what you already had to go play around with in the portal. Yeah. Right. To go get some of these other guys that I know Tobias was talking about some mid majors um, and some guys that really aren't going to jump off. But every year it feels like Arizona State has gotten at least one where you're like, OK, damn. Right. You look this past year, Adam Miller, we knew what he was capable of. At LSU the year prior, you get the Cambridge brothers. Mm -hmm. You saw what they were able to do from a scoring perspective and just pure athletics mm -hmm. this year. I think that is if, if we're talking like hope and the excitement, who's going to be that guy this year. Right. And like you said, you have you have more money to go into it and, and you want to find somebody that balances the scratch that H right now, but also somebody that you can like look and say, OK, you're you're somebody who if we properly investing you and you want to be here you won't just be here for for one season because it's hard to just tear everything down yeah. and rebuild over and over and over again and, and that's why when you put something in and, and you want to install something it's got to be like long lasting yeah. and it's got to be high quality yeah well the the, the argument I, I know i know i was trying to do an empire okay well, <laughs> well okay. Just, no you go and then i'll go I, I you just go love talking go. ball no I, um, <laughs> you're a real hooper the argument i would have to that is you have four freshmen or three yeah. freshmen and one JUCO transfer coming in. Um, the JUCO transfer played at San Diego, by the way. Nice. Um, didn't get like any minutes or run, but doesn't matter. Uh, San Diego. He, so those are your guys that you can invest in. Like you can invest in your three freshmen, and then you can build around with your one-year rentals, which I 
wouldn't really mind. A rental? Yeah, a little rental. Um, go get a guy who can score. Go get that Billiken that he was talking about. <laughs> like the Billiken. The, the, you have the you have the investments coming in already. Um, you just got to make sure that your team is good enough. Mike asking, you think yes, you can convince <laughs> Robbie Avila, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to head this way? Nothing would make me come more back into ASU basketball. Than I would happened. say no. Um, he's in jail. I, have, I genuinely sell. have no idea what his eligibility is, and I don't no know if clue. he's transferring. I don't know. I, I don't know if he would. I like it. He can maybe just be in college basketball for the rest of his life. Yeah. And he'd be like 39 years old. Just who potentially. Can potentially. And I want to be on the floor the rest of my life. There you yeah. Go. And, and, there you and go. wouldn't it be nice if like with all these uh, prospects and, and all these recruits, if you could like see and visualize what it looks like before making that decision. Like, you know, you're Bobby Hurley you're on the recruiting show. You're like, mm, I wonder what you would look like in our system. I wonder what this would look like this season. And you can just pull your phone up and watch the highlights before they happen. Yeah, there you go. Obviously, that's not reality. But if you are trying to install some floor, you can have an at-home floor visualizer with our friends over at Empire today. Because the last thing you need to do is make a really large investment and have it bite you in the butt because you're like, oh, I really like these floors. It's going to be great. And then you get them installed and Empire Today does really fantastic work. And they but transfer. <laughs> <laughs> and then the floor, your, your, your the floor hits the portal. Yeah. The floor hits the portal. With well, the you graphic guys, and everything. You don't want your floor to hit the transfer With that portal. being said, no! <laughs> I'm keeping my options open yeah. to return yeah, to your town home. Yeah, potentially return to your town home is crazy. But there's, uh, there's a nice mansion down in, in Scottsdale oh that I, I'm, I'm taking my talents to. No, but but legitimately, you don't want to make an investment in something and you know have it look great, have the install go nice and clean and easy like it would with Empire today. But then that color doesn't exactly match what you imagined it would be. And then you spend the rest of like your time in your house going, man, I really wish I did that differently. And Empire Today, not only, not only are they easy, quick, and convenient, but they make sure that they get it done right and right for you what you want. And uh, not only... Do they have, you know, professional installs and great prices? They can't offer always the lowest prices because when it comes to something as high quality as flooring, if you guarantee the lowest prices always, you're probably getting something that those installers would not put in their own home. Oh, absolutely. However, if you use code PHNX and go to empiretoday.com slash PHNX, you can get $350, which is quite a large number, off of your floors. So go ahead and schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use promo code PHNX. Some restrictions do apply, but see empiretoday.com slash PHNX for details. Do they do hardwood? They do. Because DFA might need some new floors and they could save that $350 do and you, use it to to, the, to go get a player in the portal. Hey, Frankie, we got an extra $350 yeah. here. Does that change your mind? <laughs> it's not going to um, make a difference. Well, even though I hate Desert Financial Arena a lot, um, and even though, you know, this team won 14 games last year, I'm going to still go, though. Yeah. I'm going to still go to those games. And as should you, it's the first season in the Big 12. And there's no better time to be watching basketball than when the season starts. Not right now, because see, there's no ASU basketball to watch, but... Yeah, don't if you're in to, LA, you can go to. It might be the best. What I'm trying season. to say is, you should go get your tickets <laughs> on game is. time if you're going to go. It is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. Ooh. So baseball season starting Ooh. tomorrow officially for the Diamondbacks, which makes getting tickets a lot easier and faster. Uh, prices on the game time act app actually go down as it gets closer to the first pitch, and sometimes even after the first pitch, you can get some really good prices. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, you can wait till after the game starts. Like we're right here. Right next to Chase, like if you want to sit here one day and you're just like, mm, the roof doesn't close, but we should go. Uh, <laughs> and it's got, you got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets and college basketball tickets for you sickos that want to go watch a team get blown out in the Big 12. Just kidding. They're going to win games next year. Um, yeah, it's great. Go to game time. Get your tickets. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use that code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase. T terms apply. Create an account, redeem code PHNX for $20 off. Download GameTime today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, we talked about it at the start of the show, and, and me and Shane got into it a, a tad. Um, not really a tad, but in reality, it's what we're about to talk about next kind of blows my mind. Um, oh. The, wait, you, you didn't know I, I, I had no, that? Yeah, I didn't know where you were I wanted to continue talking about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yep. You know, he's only, I think he's a junior. So okay. I think he's still okay. got eligibility <laughs> left. Uh, no. So NCAA president, Charlie Baker, he has, uh, has a little something that he wants to do. Okay. He wants to get rid of betting on player props. 
Again, not one of Shane's favorite things, despite popular belief. Uh, it's not popular belief. Your belief. He your released, belief. He released uh, a statement saying that they, the NCAA is seeking to remove college prop bets from all betting markets. Quote, the NCAA is drawing the line on sports betting to protect student athletes and to protect the integrity of the game. Um, sports betting issues are on the rise across the country with prop bets continuing to threaten the integrity of competition and leading to student athletes and professional athletes getting harassed. How do we feel about this, guys? I mean, I think it's a good thing. You yeah. think it's a good thing? Yes, because, yeah. well, I mean, it's it's more evident in today's world than it has been ever. Like, there are so many issues with, I mean, shit, fucking point-shaving scandal of Headache Smith talking about ASU. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it was happening back then. It's happening even more now. Like, you, you see the issue with Michael Porter Jr.'s brother um, in the NBA. You see the issue Definitely with, wish I got in with on that. Oh, Oh, Tony Handler is stealing money from him. Like, sports betting is awesome. Yeah. And, and a lot of things are awesome, but a lot of things are awesome in moderation. I love, I love a good four peaks. I love a good OGs, but all is great in moderation. That's mm -hmm. why we say enjoy responsibly. The same right. goes with gambling. And I mean, I know people personally that have taken it too far. Like, and, and not to say they've harassed student athletes, yeah. but they've affected their own well-being because yeah. of how much they've gambled. Um, it's something that I do literally every day and talk about. It's a dark thing. Yeah. Like yeah. when you get into the weeds of it. And, and again, that happens with like a lot of things. Like as long as things are regulated and, and you keep yourself and you keep your friends in check, like everything should be fine. But there are nasty people out there. The one thing you learn in this world that's consistent throughout every stage of life, no matter who you are, is people fucking suck. Yeah. Like most people are terrible. And most people, except yeah. for you guys in the chat, you're all awesome. No, like most people no, are terrible. Yeah, yeah. Like they are. And most people, or a lot of people gamble, a lot of people sports bet. And so you just play percentages. There's yeah. a lot of awful people gambling. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I hate it so much is because player props or gambling? Player props. Okay. Love gambling. <laughs> but NCAA player props. In the NBA, if you bet on players to do things and they don't do things, oftentimes, there are, not oftentimes, because I'm not going to say that most people do this, but there's a lot of people that will attack a player personally and yeah. threaten them personally. Yeah. Whereas, the, I mean, yes, it, it has it happens. Like, it had happened in the past. It happens in, in, in many sports before sports fighting was legalized across the nation just because people love sports yeah but it's gotten to the point where it's 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 frankly disgusting and and people that are professionals that do this for a living can handle it most of the time like they they can handle it. I'm not saying it's right that you should ever attack somebody personally for messing up your bets but but most of the time they can handle it they have professional security and they these are kids yeah yeah they they are they are literal children like they're not little children but they're they're, they're 17 18 no, you're, 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 right. Young. you're right 17 18 19 year old kids that outside of jose press <laughs> some of them are like fucking 28 okay. but that's different like, yeah that just do not need this extra pressure because yeah. they are also students. They, and, and, and it's not, it, so there's a reason why it's not legal here. Player yeah. props in, in college sports. It's not legal here. You can't do it here. You can't do it in a majority of the United States states that are legal at sports betting. And there's just no need for it. I, yeah. I think there's a reason why it's, it's illegal in a lot of states. Yeah. And there's, like you said, the barrier of access between an NBA player and a college basketball player is wildly different yeah. because not only is it like, you know, the security and everything like that as well, but more of like a lifestyle thing. When you're in the NBA, you have millions of followers and making millions of dollars and you're on the road all the time. And like, you're almost almost drowned out to sometimes that hate and that opinion to people. You're just some kid who plays college basketball, like, and is pretty good at it, but has a bad game. Like the barrier of, of somebody getting to you, somebody like making you feel like bad or uncomfortable or, or putting themselves in your life. It, it's a lot different. Plus, like you can gamble when you're in college if you're a certain age. And like that might be even people at their own universities. Yeah, that's right. Fair, that's fair and point. It, it, we saw the whole thing with was it Iowa baseball. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was off the fucking rails. dude. Well, and I think that like to that point as well. And what they're doing here, what Charlie Baker is doing is like you are starting to see the negative effects to the mass integration into the sports leagues of, of betting. And like, I'm the same place as you, Shane. Like, I think betting is fun. Like, I, I think that there's a lot of parts of it that are that are great. And there are parts of it that get people more involved in sports and the yeah. games than they would before. Right. But at the same time, the whole moderation thing and also the whole integrity thing. Right. Like if you have people kind of rigging it and, and doing that, you could 
you know, end up hurting a lot of people as well or ruining their lives and their futures for something that they don't really understand yeah. the severity of what they're doing. And in college, you're so much more susceptible to that because you're younger, because you are a little bit less secure in your future. And now that they're making money, maybe that's different, but there are a lot of guys who aren't making the Frankie yeah. Collins like 200,000 ish yeah. dollars a year, you know? So getting out ahead of it instead of being reactionary is not something I'm usually seeing the NCAA do. And, and I think that that's a good call. And and I do feel like we've, we've gone too far, too much of a good thing. Like as far as the, the leagues themselves being in bed with a lot of these like books and stuff like that. And, and I think this is maybe the first step of, of peeling that back and finding the right balance for something that is yeah. fun. And that is honestly can even sometimes be educational by the way it gets people involved yeah. in the game. Yeah. Like, I, look, I know I joked, but I, I think again, this is something that, just sports gambling in general, the same way that NIL and Transfer Portal work, there needs to be restrictions. There needs to be it needs to be refined a little bit. And I think sports betting across all levels needs to be refined a tad because you've seen it in the NFL. You've seen it already now in the NBA. You've heard of it and seen it in college sports like it is. You were impacted by it. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, there are certain things. Most of you that uh, watch the show were impacted by it. Like, yeah. there are certain things that just need to be refined a little bit. I thought you were, I thought you were against what he said. Yeah, just. Uh, we convinced him. Tony, we convinced him. Tony Switcheroo is back. The Tony man. Switcheroo. God. Gosh, that's uh, what they're calling me these days. Joke, jokes Stop quacking back jo there, Mac. Jokes aside, another major point about this is what makes college sports so great is it's not a big industry it's not a massive and i know the ncaa makes it feel like that sometimes but like at its core the games you're going to are not some big event professionally put on that's like a lot of it is student ran mm -hmm. and and like the inner from the in arena host to the people that set stuff up to the score key, like a lot of it is student ran and and th this is just making it feel even more corporate which really sucks because what is so great about college sports is how intimate it can be and how like mm -hmm. the rooting interest isn't because i grew up a fan of this team it's because i was in the culture i was integrated into the culture like this is what i live and breathe yeah so that's another reason why i'm i'm really against it um why, why are we talking about early recruiting internationally it's, talking about kyle and boswell oh, yeah. I, I, go, I, I knew they were they love to um, go off the rails okay that's just fine can we, can we do whatever you want can we yeah, yes, let's do it. Can we talk you. about Josh Doan? Let him know. Let the people know what happened last night. Um, well, first of all, plus 400 on the bet show gave it out <laughs> yesterday morning. Duh. It was easy. Uh, Josh Doan did something that he's done hundreds of times, and that was drive to Mullet Arena for a game. <laughs> but he drove to Mullet Arena for a NHL game and it had his NHL debut last night with his dad in the building and scored two damn goals. First time Incredible. in Arizona Coyotes history. You know how history. bad the fucking Yotes needed this? First time in Arizona Coyotes history history this has been nothing but pain in the past month and a half they they the auction still hasn't posted this team could be gone at the end of the year like you just don't know that you don't know no, no but that's the severity of this situation like like the fans needed a win the team has been terrible arizona needed a win the fans needed a win so bad and who else but the Don family to give it to them? It's just so poetic. And what would have been the most poetic thing is if he would have scored a hat trick. I don't know yeah. if you guys know, but Shane Don didn't get a hat trick for until like he was at like the tail end of his career. And he scored a ton of go two goal games. And Josh almost did it in his first. I think it took Shane like 1,100 or something That's ridiculous. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> Imagine if he did it in his first game. Been... Also, uh, PH and X's very first NIL athlete. Yes, Josh Don. Love it. Did you see the Coyotes actually tweeted out a photo of that shirt? Really? Yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. It's just a great moment for like him and his family and, and then like hockey in Arizona. And those are the moments yeah. where like obviously our, our PH and X Coyotes crew is is fantastic. And then they're the best at what they do. PD, Leah, and uh and Craig, all, all individually and what they do and how they cover the team in their different ways. Like they are incredible. And it's nice to see like them get a moment, the fans get a moment, the state get a moment, the franchise get a moment. Because like you said, the Shane, school like get they, a moment. Like the school get a moment. Like it's they they have been desperate for one. And this is something that's been bubbling. It's it's been yeah. building as well. And, and you can also say, like, he's earned it, right? Like it wasn't like, oh, he's a don. He just walked in. No, he he had to go through it, man. And, and he got there. And as soon as he got on the ice, as soon as he did, it, it was instantly capitalized on. And it's moments like that that show you not only does hockey belong at ASU, but hockey belongs in Arizona. Hockey yeah. belongs in the desert. Like cool moment for Greg Powers for sure. Oh yeah, uh, being there and being able to see his, his former player uh, score a 
scored not one but two goals. I think he called it too, didn't he? I think but, he told Craig before the game that he's going to score. Yeah, of course. Doing it again in the arena that yeah. he played his collegiate career, yeah. or at least the last and season both, of his collegiate both career. Both goals were the most down goals. Well, first, the first one was nasty, like a, a, a mid-air redirect, Crosby-esque goal. But the second one was just a tip, and it just like just mix it up. Like yeah. that's his game. That's his dad's game. It's he. He's more of a goal scorer than his dad, though. I mean, he's a this, dog. He's gonna be. He's gonna be real good. And somebody tweeted at me uh, last night, just in terms of like Doan and what this means. Like, it's free advertising for Arizona State for Arizona yeah. State hockey recruiting, right? I to, mean, to Mullet be, Arena every time they play there is free yeah, advertising it's, too. It's, it's incredible. That's probably not free, but like, it's still <laughs> ridiculous to me that like. It's just you couldn't drop a better story. Yeah, and you're going into your your first major conference yeah. as a mm-hmm. as a school next year for hockey, uh, the NCHC, and it's it, it's oh, it's it's going to be really exciting. Like you um, said, Arizona and hockey, they're beautiful. They go together. Hockey belongs in the state of Arizona, and it belongs at Arizona State. Guys, you know what else is a great match? Tell me. Um, um, your you. money Ooh. and Circle K. Mm. The Circle K gas. Sometimes it's not even your money. That's Sometimes true. just you and Circle K. Just you and Circle K. Free, it's free. Sometimes. Yeah, it's free. They got it's all true. the vibes. And they got a new free membership program called Inner Circle that's going to help you save some of that money every single day. Save 25 cents per gallon on your first five fill-ups. And guess what? What? If that's not enough, they huh? got something else for you. What do they have? They have saved three cents per gallon Ayo. every single day after that. And Eric, if that's not enough, guess what? I mean, it is enough, but you got to tell me what's next. They got next. every sixth free. Jeez. On their little snacks, their little treaties. What kind of snacks? Pizza. What? Coffee, oh. ice cold fountain drinks, pizza, coffee, and so much more. Pizza, coffee, pizza flavored coffee, mm. or coffee flavored pizza. Coffee flavored pizza. Coffee flavored pizza. What about you? Uh, I think I'll do pizza flavored coffee. Pizza flavored Ew. coffee. I'm just kidding. No, no that, just, that might go crazy. I don't no. think so. Might go That'd crazy. Be Imagine like drinking a coffee. There's like a pepperoni in there. Like no. Totally well, also no, no. drinks flavored, the flavored. like most offensive smelling coffee I've ever smelled. That is crazy. Ha, have Have you smelled it? How no, does, I don't how think does I have. the smell of my coffee offensive? No, like what? Like if if a smell is really pungent, it's like offensive. Like it's not like it's not offensive. Like I'm not. It's by Twix it. flavored. See, that's disgusting. No, it's not. That it's is black dis- coffee. No, it just smells good. It's not black coffee if it's, it's Twix, Twix flavored. flavored. <laughs> Those things contradict it's, each other. It's, just, it's, just try it. it's one of the K cups, man. Like, just oh. it, it's it tastes good. Okay. Not a Circle K cup. Believe though. me. No, but Circle K has a million and five different things. Check them out for yourself. Join Inner Circle for free by downloading that Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Also visit a lot of different places where you can get a lottery ticket because oh. Arizona Lottery is introducing a new, unique ticket and promotion called Arizona Adventure. There's three ways to win and play. All you got to do is play Arizona Adventure. Lotteries featuring three iconic landscapes, Picacho Peak, Monument Valley, Camelback Mountain, and these tickets can win you up to $50,000 or you can check in at their geo-located adventures at 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma. Uh, I know Gerald needs it. He needs to go outside and touch some grass because all he does is He's watch tape. <laughs> uh, so he should go do that. And you should go visit www.azadventure.com for, de- for de- details and directions for it. Check in at the destination coordinates on the website or enter the tickets online for a chance to win $1 million. For Arizona cash and travel prizes. The Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take uh, an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Guys, that's going to do it for Aww. today's PHNX Sun Devil Show. I know. It's okay. But do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the little the dinger, the little notifications, and you guys are going to... Someone's going to let you know every time we go live. The, the little man inside your phone and your computer, they're going to be like, hey, guys, PHNX is going live. Um, so, yeah, do that. Subscribe. No, hit no, the like button. That's not what happens. That's we, not what happens. We do what? not put a little guy in your no, computer. No, no, no. We don't put a little, no, the little guy. In, the little guy lives in your phone no, already. No, He's just no, here to let no, you know. No, there's no little guy. There's a little girl that's in the phone that's going to be like, hey, guys, we're going live. Okay, just know no, that. That's not what happens. Okay. It's just Whatever. actually a notification. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. There should be little guys. There one, should be. One day there's going to be little guys. What are they going to be called? Little guys. Oh, that's it. Buy your little guys <laughs> at your nearest Circle K. Give us a follow. Little guys. Buy your, you get your six little guys. Give us a follow. <laughs> little guys. At PHNX underscore side of the They're small. Me. They're cool. And they remind you of At things. Anthony underscore Toe You can follow Eric Ruby. At Eric Ruby. That's Eric with a K. You can follow DJ Jacob Franklin. At Jacob underscore Franklin 4. DJ Jacob Franklin. He is a kid. And you can follow this guy, Big Pokey, a.k.a. Little Man. At Shane Deef. Just a little tiny guy, as always. We will be back. small. We will be back on Thursday so to recap day two blow me away. of Arizona State's uh, spring football season. But in the meantime, guys, go Devils. Bye. And peace.
Like the mayor, 